Welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host. And this is for July 3rd, 2020. So, uh, July 3rd, 2020, Planetary Persuader. So, let's do what I do. And that's the first thing I do is I look at the moon. And it appears to me that the moon is in the constellation of um, Sagittarius, <clears throat> as well as in the sign of Sagittarius, at least if it's later in the day. If you're early in the morning, you're watching this, moon could still be in Scorpio in the nakshatra of Jayishta, but I'll say, you know, by, by the early afternoon, the moon will be in the lunar mansion known as Mula. So what does Mula mean? You know, Mula means root. We want to get to the root of things. Um, Mula's re ruling deity is Naritrio. She is not like a happy-go-lucky, free-spirited goddess. I mean, at least it doesn't seem like it. I guess she has her days. Yeah. She's known for calamity. And she's known for getting rid of things we don't need. Ruling planet is K2, which is the south node of the moon. And it's about spiritual karma. It's about our subconscious. It relates a little bit to the sign of Scorpio in some ways. <clears throat> and so, you know, we're moving in that, into that. The moon's in the galactic center. And what else is important about this moon is that we are headed towards a lunar eclipse. Okay, so this is our second lunar eclipse in, in the month. Um, and that happens at 9.44 p.m. Saturday the 4th. Pacific Daylight Time. So if you live in California, that's like right when the fireworks start. And right when the fireworks start, there's a lunar eclipse. I mean, that's kind of auspicious of something. Um, but, I, you know, I lose ca use caution. Another thing that's happened this week is we have um, Saturn went back out of Aquarius. It's going to go out of Aquarius. It just did back into Capricorn. So Saturn's in Capricorn, hanging out with Pluto, hanging out with Jupiter. And it's still Capricorn in the sidereal system. So this is real Capricorn, folks. This is not just seasonal planet. This is where the rubber hits the road. And what does Capricorn teach us? You know, I mean, I understand it's key phrases I use, but it's, it's the most motivated place for Earth. It's most motivated place for change of material things, money, um, sure, houses, property, vehicles, um, workplace, changes in work code, changes in work. And, you know, a lot of times when planets are retrograde, they act like the sign before it. Okay, so Jupiter retrograde in Capricorn in a way is great because it still has a little bit of that Sagittarian vibe, you know, of good fortune. As soon as it goes direct again, well, it, it'll, you know, it won't be necessarily quite the same energy. Um, so there's something fortunate about the Jupiter retrograde. It's also about retrograde planets. So we still have Mercury retrograde. We still have, um, we don't have Venus retrograde, and that's a relief. And we, um, we don't have a lot of planets. I mean, we have Jupiter and, and Pluto and Saturn, but we and Mercury. So at least you know Venus going direct is helping us. Anyhow, Mars and Aries. Aries, greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, Mars is in the first house. You're feeling your power. You're feeling like okay, I'm I've landed on my feet again. I'm going to be able to move forward. I'm going to be able to move through everything. Now, eventually, they say Mars is going to go retrograde. Um, it's not so bad, necessarily. You know, so, you know, right now, you're kind of thinking about your feelings. You're thinking about the unpredictability about finances, but also like you're, you're finding sweetness with old friends, your siblings writing poetry, music, writing plays, you're kind of getting a little creative something going on. And yeah, there's changes in the workplace. I'll be darned. Well, hello, Taurus, and uh, welcome to your horoscope. 
So, you know, enjoy Venus Direct, you know, it's like, that's, <laughs> that could be a great slogan, that could be a great meme, um, enjoy Venus Direct, I know I will, um, in a sense, though, there is beauty to be found all around. And even though things are a little bit unpredictable now, and you like things to be predictable and stable, but you're pretty much a feet on the ground type of person. I mean, there might be some people that don't have your best intentions, you know, uh, the secret enemies thing. Place of losses. I mean, what I know about like a 12th house transit, so since a lot of you are sidereal Aries anyhow, let's, let's pay attention to Mars. you got to pay attention to Mars, most of you Taurus people, especially if you're born before the 14th. Um, you know, yeah, pay attention to Mars. Um, it has this potential, you know, to kind of undo what you want to do. Now, if you're seeking a spiritual way, like going backpacking, or going to a monastery, or an ashram, or some meditation center, I mean, that, that's the thing to do. That's, if you can, I mean, you know, social distance, safe, and all that, you know, whatever works. Um, and, um, you're going to learn some great lessons from this. I feel like you understand that life is a great adventure, <clears throat> and you're going to work with that adventure. Well, greetings, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, Mercury retrograde certainly affects you, and it affects your getting tongue-tied in matter of speech, it affects your relationship with money and material things, it's affecting your relationship with your family, and even like how you were raised, you know, like maybe between 7 and 14, what went down, you know, that's stuff to think about, um, okay, you're going through a lot of transformation with this Pluto, <sighs> Jupiter, Saturn thing. Now, now, here's the good news. It's like, you know, Jupiter and Saturn, they're both the gurus. You know, they both are. I mean, <clears throat> one of my teachers, Andrew Foss, who wrote uh, Yoga of the Planets, he would say, said to me, Saturn always comes with a club. <laughs> or often, you know, it's ready to club us when we're out of line. And so it's, it's really true. It's very true. And Rahu, or the North Node of the Moon, can actually act like Saturn. This is not something that you, you know, tropical astrologers use this stuff that much, you know, but some of them do who really know the deep stuff. Um, it's kind of a, it's an eclipse, it's sort of romantic, it might be a little volatile, because, you know, Neritri, she's not content, and a lot of times, Mula Nakshatra is associated with disquieted women in some ways. It's like, you know, they have a Nakshatra for that. Yeah, but this is the deal, though, is that she brings, gets rid of stuff that you don't need, really. And then you go into your spiritual life, and then real wealth starts coming to you that's solid. And you have a direction of how to use it and what to do about it. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so... Greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay. Chandra. You know, the name of the moon. Um, always bringing light. And bringing light during this eclipse. So, I mean, I guess in the, on the west coast, you should be able to see this, I would imagine. Um, it should be quite dramatic. So, um, I don't know about the exact... Yeah, the lunar eclipse happens at, um, at 13 degrees um, 
Capricorn, and that's actually Apus God of Water ruled um, Purva Shada Nakshatra for the eclipse, the full moon, and, and so um, good things, you know. I mean, if you need help with your health, you know, that's what I would watch. Don't get dehydrated. <sighs> um, help other people, like six houses where we work our karma out, like the losses of the twelfth house can be totally remedied by doing good deeds, good works in the sixth house. Mm. Okay. Going to Leo. Leo, your key phrase is, I will. And um, it's a good quality, you know, to be willing. <laughs> and you pride yourself in being capable. But here's the deal. Um, Here's the deal, buckaroo. <laughs> Cancer is your 12th house. Um, that's a house of losses. This is a house to lay low. Okay? That's really the message. And pay attention to your spiritual life. Think about what lessons you've reaped over this last year and how you'd like to see yourself moving forward. And I'd say make a list about it. Um, okay, so, for you, this full moon's in the fifth house. I mean, not quite. It's actually, when it's full, it's in the sixth. So it's watching your health, you know. I, whereas I could backtrack and say to cancer, you know, I, uh, <laughs> you know, there's partnership issues still, too, uh, in, the, in the fix. Um, so, uh, you know, in... in the long run, though, for today, for Friday, it's a sweet day for Leos. You know, it's like um, open to your children, maybe something featuring them. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a transformation to how you look at partnership issues. You know, it's going on. And, and it may, you may be in a partnership that's going nowhere, and that's, uh, that's completely understandable. Um, with all these retrogrades, uh, but uh, it's kind of a make it or break it point. And the thing I really love about um, Jupiter and Pluto together is that it can signify a miracle or some some kind of miraculous <clears throat> good outcome. Hmm. Okay. All right. So Virgo, welcome your horoscope. Well, Virgo, I mean, it's all about good people. And making money right now. So, um, you're at a place where you're welcoming more wealth into your life. And Mercury is often symbolic of wealth in a lot of ways. It's ne technology, but our, our gadgets, our tools, our material needs are often seen, or our material desires, maybe that's better, in uh, Mercury. And the 11th house has an element of good fortune. So that's where the Sun is. That's where Mercury is right now. And good connections. Older siblings that might be blessing you, even if you don't have older siblings. Um, often people that are just older than you that have your best interests. And it's like also this is a house where you're able to apply the lessons from your gurus. And it's important stuff um, to think about it. And um, make a positive go. You have um, a lot of creative energy that's kind of fomenting inside you. So you kind of have to work with that creative stuff. And if you have children, expect a miracle in their lives. Um, and, you know, love what you do. Do what you love. You know, that's really, you know, Venus's message, transiting your career life. Um, things are kind of intense with Mars and Aries. I mean, that's 8th house Mars. It, you know, the, watch against impatience or hastily. And like what I really find, my mantra is, I can surrender and trust them being taken care of. Because there's also this element, asking people for help. Whenever you have an 8th eighth, eighth house transit, people like to help you. Okay. Hello, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. Yeah. 
So, I mean, this full moon is like in your fourth house when it gets to be eclipse time. Now, right now, this moon's just in the third house, so things are still kind of cool. The party's going on. The neighbors are, you know, having their barbecue, and you can smell it, and, you know, you also smell that it's been a while since they've cleaned up their dog mess. I mean, you know, all these kind of things. You know, you're aware of the neighbors. Maybe you're aware of siblings and old friends, just with that lunar transit. Um, it's also a time where people go on vacation, and you're left to be boss and take on responsibility a lot of times, often, that you don't really necessarily want, but you do it anyway. Um, I've seen this kind of resigned. The trooper, you know, Libra getting on and um, doing their thing. <laughs> um, and then we, you know, but Mercury's there too. So you are making money, and you are getting well-known for your talents, your skills, your abilities. This isn't all that bad. I mean, Mars over there in the seventh house, it's interesting. Yeah. It's like, what's the wildest thing you do in a partnership? <laughs> um, or is there open hostility? And how do we become better negotiators? Because usually when there's hostility, it just means there's a need that's not being met. And if we approach it like, hey, is there something I can do that you'd like to see done to make things better? Or is there something, you know, somewhere that there could be done? I don't know. That's a good question. We're going, to, we're going to go down Scorpio. Scorpio land is here. We are doing the Scorpio thing. Okay. All right, Scorpio. <clears throat> so Mars and Aries. Um, this is a good time to go swimming, to get in shape physically. Crank up some music and dance if that motivates you more. Um, depending on what kind of climate you live in, you know. Where... I live, summer is everything it's cracked up to be, except minus summer thunder showers. Um, it's, it's just dry and hot and baking. <laughs> and, um, but it's okay, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're well cooked. Um, but it might be different, you know, if you're on the coast or some other place, and it might be very comfortable right now. A lot of this, you know, the most of the grahas, most of the planets are in the side of other people. I, I think that's really interesting for you. So you've got all this kind of relationship stuff happening. Well, that's interesting, right? And, you know, it's, so it's like you got to be good in yourself. And, and your Uranus is like the centerpiece planet opposing you. And it's like, oh my God. Everything's so unpredictable, and you know, and yet that's where we go to the Divine Mother, that's where we go to the Heavenly Father, that's where we go to our Divine Parents, you know, and ask for this help, this blessing, this stability that we need to have, you know, and you know, that might not match your belief system, but that you at least are an evolutionary being that through creation has survived, and because of your ancestors, what they, some of the, their good decisions, and that you're someone a free agent and able to make decisions, and that's a blessing too. I mean, that would be um, that would be something to think about right now. I mean, it could be a miracle around your brothers, your family, your peer group, um, and um, <clears throat> you know, you might be just like a really with Venus in the eighth house hovering there, or along with North Node Rahu. You know, there's this. You know, you're known for the whole sexual hunger thing. It's just like you just kind of have to try and keep it cool. And realize that's a power you can circulate in yourself and apply it to other areas of your, of your life. It's a magical power. All right. <clears throat> Greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So it's a friendly moon, right? Moon in Sagittarius this weekend it makes people want to travel. And, you know, people have been cooped up for a while. And um, right to travel. I think that was one of the Bill of Rights things. Um, and yeah, there's a time where there's potential danger, and there always is danger. In fact, you're just in danger because you got in a, in a car and you're on the road. That makes you, that danger probably is worse than coronavirus, but it's novelty. You know, novelty can set us into a space of fear. It can set us into a place of love and appreciation. It can set us into a place of anger. It can set us into a place of compassion. So, you know, you want to have compassion that ultimately is going to get you through this thing. So, I mean, there might be some family stuff going down. That's what I'm thinking. 
family, um, you know, they know how to touch all our buttons and everything. And um, when the moon gets full, it's going to be in your second house. A voice, money, and I, I would say just the best thing to do in these times, really, is meditate by a creek. Keep it cool. Call a loved one and say, hey, I just want you to know that I appreciate you. You know, just get down to the core values. Keep it simple. Don't say anything. You know, not a Mercury retrograde. Not any more than needs to be said. Keep it all as clear as possible. Um, people forget anyway. You know, I, 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 uh, we have to be reminded. That's what Ram Dass says. So, um. Yeah, I think, you know, and, and for you too, it's all these relations and all this power from Mars in your fifth house. It's like it's fun, you know, to move around. Oh boy. Well, looks like we're uh, getting in there into uh, Capricorn territory here. Um, okay. So, greetings Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, Saturn got back to you, you know. Yes, she waywardly left you. <laughs> so she could ap appeal to that world of the second house, your family, your throat. Um, and so now there is this full moon, lunar eclipse in your first house on um, Saturday night, Sunday morning, depending on where you live in the world. Um, oh my goodness, you know, it's, um, it's real, and, um, <clears throat> and there's a sense of victory, you know, in a way, too, it's like, there's a sense that your relationships will get better, but, you know, th there could be some explosive stuff associated with this, I'm not going to kid around. <clears throat> and I also think there'll be some flooding somewhere because of Apis the water god. Okay. So here we go to Aquarius. Greetings Aquarius. Welcome to your horoscope. Thank you for being here. Um, well, I mean, you're trying to get more into your personal life right now. You're trying to get into that inner space. You know, space, the final frontier. And... Um, Cancer time, it's kind of more health challenging. You're like, oh, I'm so over this <coughs> moody intimacy that my friends seem to want from me. Where I like to stay logical, detached, cool, and collective. <laughs> but but appear weird at the same time, you know. Isn't that isn't that the, the Aquarius motto? Cool and collective, but Proud of my weirdness. Um, go out of my way to demonstrate it at times. And so this moon is social right now. So this is like party night for you. This other moon, yikes. This is the house of losses, you know. And this is also, though, a place of immense spiritual growth. And that's what's going on. So just stay on that track. Stay on that spiritual growth journey that you already are on. There's a blessing connected with this. And um, acknowledge that blessing. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I could talk a little bit of Uranus talk. I mean, Saturn's really a bigger player, and so is the North Node. Um, so, North Node and Venus in the fifth is kind of like you want to be happy. You want to be happy about your children. You want to be happy about your creativity. You want to be happy about <clears throat> your latest romance. So, um, yeah. Celebrate that. Alright. So we're winding things up with Pisces. Well, Pisces, I mean... Cancer time is a good time. For water signs. So, I mean, your water sign, this is going to be good. This is fifth house. It's heart opening. It's um, giving you different kinds of information. And it's like, I think the thing that's important is don't be arrogant about 
the truth you might be privy to. Things are always changing, and humility is our best friend. And um, your social life is going through a big change. But, I mean, you're not feeling quite as agitated as you were before. And, I mean, this full moon could um, create a miracle socially. I, you know, good or bad, I think it'll be good for you. And I really thank you for uh, liking this video, for sharing it. Um, for subscribing to it, having the bell ring, and um, you can contact me through, via email if you uh, want a personal reading or something. Anyhow, Cosmic Kev, Planetary Persuader, checking out.